You've had quite the week. How are you? Um, I think I understand how Caroline Flack felt. Last week, if my daughters hadn't been there, then I wouldn't be here. And they've guarded me um, and won't let me out of their sight. It's like a weird numbness. I know that's a selfish point of view, but you come to a point where you just think, how much are you supposed to take if all of those people that write all of that stuff, do they ever think that there's actually a person at the other end? And so, here I am, Mum. Yeah. Are you feeling okay to do this? Are you feeling strong enough to do this interview? Yeah, I have to. Why? Why do you want to do this interview? Because there is an innocent person here who didn't do anything wrong. Uh, who is vulnerable and probably feels like I do. And I just have to say, stop with him. Uh, okay with me, but stop with him. Leave him alone now. You mentioned this young man, and at the centre of recent events is a young man who, together with many others in the media, we're not going to name. You know, under Article 8 of the Human Rights Act, he has a right to privacy, and he's not here today to give his own account of events. When did you last speak to him? Um, as I engaged the lawyer for him. Um, so um, he needed independent support. And so that was the last time. Is that a few weeks ago now? Yeah, a couple of weeks. OK. How concerned are you about his welfare right now? Massively. Massively concerned. When did you first meet this young man in question? What were the circumstances? I was invited by a friend of mine to go to open a drama school and that's where the picture was taken. Um, whether it was immediately or sometime after, he said, will you, um, will you follow him on Twitter because he's a, he's a fan? So I said, yeah, sure, no problem, which I did. And he was, what, 15 at the time? Yeah. And this is over a but decade I follow, ago. I follow 11,300 people and in all the time I've been on Twitter, there has never been any whiff of impropriety. And how often were you in touch with him? Hardly, uh, hardly at all. He then said that he was interested in television. OK, you know, good luck, good luck. Anything I can do to help? Probably, that's what I normally say. Um, and that was it for a while. And then he asked if he could visit the studios, work experience type of thing. I said, well, you come down and have a look for sure, which he did. How old was he when he first said to you, I'm interested in television? Was he 18 by that point? Nine, 19 then, I would think. He was 19 by then. When you look back now, if you were to look back at those messages now, is there any sense in which you were flirting with him? No. I mean, I, I, I've been 41 years in television. You know, no, nothing like this before, you know, no, no accusations. I mean, this is, this is all, you know, accusations. And then when you met him in person, was there a little moment of sexual attraction then even? Absolutely not. OK, so to be absolutely clear, how old was this young man when you first had any kind of sexual contact with him? 20. 20. Because I want to, I mean, this is, Obviously, the number of it, and for the record, and to put speculation to rest. Did, let me ask you, Derek, did you have any 
kind of sexual relationship or sex with him when he was underage? No, God, no. That I think that is, a, you know, in, our, in my statement, it, it says, you know, consensual relationship, fully legal. I mean, that was approved by both sides. You know, that's no, no. He'd been working at the show for a few months, um, and and we become mates. We were mates, and um, you know, we got around the studios. You hang out together. You know, you chat to each other, that sort of stuff, and then. In my dressing room one day, something happened. Um, which, you know, obviously I will regret forever for him and for me, mostly him. But it, that happened maybe four or five times over the next few months and I know it's unforgivable um, but we weren't boyfriends, we weren't in a relationship. I was really in a mess with my own sexuality at the time and it just happened. How old was he at this stage? 20, 21. Who knew on the team? Nobody. To my knowledge. I mean, somebody has to know something for there to be a rumour later on. I, I didn't believe that anybody knew. And did you ever tell Holly Willoughby? No, God no. Uh, that's a bit a, a bigger question because we, we, we have our makeup room was like a sanctuary, um, has always been a sanctuary. So you tell everything in that room. Holly knows everything about me. I know everything about Holly. Holly did not know. Nobody knew. And you never, you never told her? No, I didn't tell anybody. I mean, the reason this matters is because it is about potential abuse of power. And I, know it is... I understand that. And, I, and that is a very, very valid question to put to me. And people would say, the circumstances are as follows here. You met someone who was a child, you were in a position of power over them, you used your power eventually to give them something they craved, which was a, shot at a job in the media, you nurtured a relationship and then that relationship became sexual. And they might ask, what's the difference between that and grooming? Well, I would say that your initial list of things was not, not right anyway. Tell me, why? Because it was a totally innocent picture, a totally innocent Twitter follow, of which I follow 11,400 people, and uh, and then it was a, a completely innocent backwards and forwards over a period of time about a job, about careers. What's wrong with, with talking to someone, no matter, you know, what age they are? Does that mean that if, you know, if you are, if you're following anyone on Twitter, that you absolutely don't talk to anybody else or you don't give advice? So I, I, I disagree with the summation that you just gave because that does paint a very grave picture. Do you know if he has signed an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, preventing him from speaking? No. You don't know no, if he, he has? No. Did I make him sign an NDA? No, absolutely not. But there's a question of whether or not he was, as it were, paid off. And no. in effect, if he was paid off, no. was he paid for his silence? No, God, no. No, so no. is he free to speak if he wants to? Yeah, yes. I mean, what he wants is for all of this to go away. He wants a quiet life. And just on a, a couple of points of information, just to be clear, you are currently on an ongoing basis, you're paying for his legal advice and support. Mm. Has there ever been, or is there, an injunction or any sort of NDA preventing media coverage of your relationship with him? No. Why is all this coming out now, Philip? What was the catalyst? What changed? It got too big. The lie got too big for both of us. It just got enormous. It was growing and growing and growing, and it it crossed over from the from online to uh, mainstream news. ITV's position is that they and they've only put out one statement about all this. Um, they say they investigated allegations of an improper relationship, and they were told by both you and the young man that there was no relationship. In retrospect, was that investigation a sham? Because it clearly didn't get to the truth, did it? I think if you have two people who are lying, then what, what can you do? 
And what did that investigation amount to? I mean, was it sort of was it just a phone call to you and a phone call to the young man? Was it sort of a proper sort of independent? I think he was sort of... asked. He was asked quite a bit. I was asked a couple of times. Um, so you know, it's um, and it wasn't formal. Is this the tip of the iceberg? Are there more allegations or revelations to come, or, or as far as you're concerned, is it all biggest, out? It's it all was out my there. biggest, sorriest secret. When did you last speak to Holly Willoughby? Uh, I um, WhatsApped her on the day that I put the statement up, and I said to her, I know you can't reply, you're probably not allowed to, but please know that I am so desperately, desperately sorry. Did you reply? 